because it's not like I can cut it open and show you. Wait a minute, yes I can. Hey again guys, and welcome back. Today I want to talk to you about these uh, tiny little things. These are the PC817 Opto Isolators. But um, I feel like these are not much good to look at, so let's go into how an Opto Isolator works. So here is a super simple circuit that I've designed. Now, it's not just one circuit, it's actually two circuits, but that's relevant for us. So what I have over on this side is I have 5 volts, and I have a ground, and the 5 volts goes through a resistor. Uh, in this case, it's 100 ohms, but it doesn't really matter. For this example, I have a switch like that. I have a red LED, and I have a ground. Okay, so I've got 5 volts here, through a 100 ohm uh, resistor, through a switch, through the red LED to ground. On the other side, however, I only have my 5 volts, which is about uh, here. I have uh, an LED. and I have a switch, and I have a resistor, 100 ohms, and I have a ground. So two separate circuits, and what happens is if I touch this switch here, this one here, the red LED comes on. If I touch this switch here, so it's that one there, the green LED comes on. So what's important to know about these two circuits is that there is no way that any voltage from this side of the circuit can jump to this side. So there's actually, there's a physical air gap right here. So press this, press this, these are completely separate. Now what happens if we want this side to control this side? Well, let me rejigger the circuit a little bit. My circuit is now reconjiggered, but not by that much. So we still have our 5 volt here and our ground here. And we still have our 100 ohm resistor. We still have our switch. We still have our LED. And we still have our ground. But what we've changed is that on the other side here, instead of a switch, what we have is something a little bit different. So we'll still have our 5 volts coming in to a LED, like that. Now we have, instead of our switch, we have a transistor, the little diode on that side, and then we have a resistor. 100 ohms, and we have our ground. But now to power this transistor, which is acting like a switch, so it's basically the same thing as a switch, okay, we're grabbing here to the base of the transistor. So that's base, uh, that's emitter, and that's collector. And this is just a uh, 2N, uh, let's see, 2N, 3904 NPN. So now what happens is when I hit this switch here, you see that? Both the LEDs come on because the base of this transistor is now being activated by this switch. And so we have a connection between here and here, but that also means that current can now flow from this end to this end. And if current can flow, that means voltage can flow. I mean, we've got you know nearly 5 volts coming through here from this side to this side. So that isolation is now broken. So we don't have any anything to stop current from coming from this side to the other. And this here is where the PC817 comes in. Let me rejigger this one more time. The final rejiggering is done. So now our circuit will look very similar to the other circuits. So we got our 5 volts here. It'll come through a 100 ohm resistor. 
and then it comes through a switch like so and then it'll come to our magic box here okay which is our PC817 so into there and then out of here and then continue on to its merry way down to ground on the other end though we have 5 volts we have our LED into the PC817 and then a resistor 100 ohms and then ground so basically it looks exactly the same aside from the fact that our LED on this side has been replaced by the PC817 and our switch and transistor on this side has been replaced by the PC817 so this would actually be uh, pins that's pin 1 that's pin 2 that's pin 3 and that's pin 4 and let's see what happens now when we hit our switch so you only see one LED come on we only have the one LED but why is this working the same as our previous circuit well that's because on the inside here we have an LED and on the inside here we have a transistor however this transistor is actually activated by this LED there's no physical connection between this side and this side so there is no way for voltage to come from this end and go into this end so that is how an opto isolator works the opto comes from optical because it's actually light going from one side to the other so that's pretty cool you're just gonna have to trust me that there's an LED in here because it's not like I can cut it open and show you wait a minute yes I can so this here is our PC817 and if you sand down the top a little bit you'll get this so you see that inside this black case is actually some white and the white is probably there because they need that LED usually it's an infrared LED to transmit light from one side to the other so they could either leave this empty or simply put this white to help transmit from one end to the other if we go even further than that we can here see there's the actual LED and I'll get you a closer look at this in a second so I've actually measured the space between here and here and it's roughly one millimeter now it's common knowledge that approximately um, one millimeter of air gap will prevent the transmission of 1000 volts of voltage but these guys claim to have 5000 volts of isolation so this white material must be made out of something that is a better insulator than air so you know plastic or something so that makes that makes a lot of sense let me get you an even closer look at this device trying my very best not to shake the camera while I show you this but yeah you can see right there that looks like a sort of diffusion substrate on top of the LED and the LED I don't think would be visible at this magnification but uh, yeah it's it's in there that thing is pretty damn cool and how can I prove that this is actually an LED you ask well I have a component tester here I'm also too lazy to uh, change the lens so we're just gonna have to do this in macro mode but so there it is in the component tester and press the button there we go diode voltage forward 1.18 volts so yeah this is how opto oscillators work and once you know where to find these things or how to find them 
you'll find them everywhere. So this here is a uh, 12 volt relay that another maker sent me. And on this side here is a little ops opto isolator. So I assume this is to isolate whatever goes on in the relay end from our microcontroller on this end. And so you probably just control this with a five volt signal, which you would never want to get 12 volts back on. So it has a little LED and a little transistor all built into one package. However, this thing works double duty because when you shut down a, um, a, a coil on a relay, there's a huge high voltage spike that happens. And this opto isolator is really the only correct way to separate that from your Arduino. You can use a freewheeling diode to kind of recirculate the voltage back into the coil. However, if that diode ever breaks down, you're done for. This opto isolator means there's a literal gap of space between the two. So if the opto isolator does fail, you're not ruining your Arduino. I know it's not very clear to you, but right now you're looking inside a computer power supply. And this here is the main transformer that will transform the sort of high voltage coming in from your wall socket down to the various voltages you need inside a computer power supply. And if I go up here, you'll see there's another little transformer. And then what begins to appear here, right there, is a slot in the circuit board to separate the high and low voltage. But if we go a little bit higher, what's that? And then two more. So these guys here are opto isolators and they're often used for feedback so that your power supply knows what's going on on the output to try to regulate its um, transformer better, switch its transformer at the right frequencies. So this is the only smart way to do it because you don't want 120 volts in North America or over 200 volts in Europe to transfer from this side here onto your precious computer components on that side. So the optical isolator will actually separate the two sides and make sure that it is always safe for your components downstream. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed our quick look and test of opto isolators and a little bit of a tour on how and why they're used. And if you like content like this, let me know in the comments below so I know what you guys prefer of what I post. I hope to catch you in the next video. See you next time.